Hello and welcome to the Mistcast table. My name is Jonas and my name is Mons. And today we're gonna take a look at one of the new warbands. It is the Exile Dead. Yeah. Or the Race Dead, as I like to call them. For some <laughs> yeah. reason, I can't. I always get that wrong. Yeah, I don't really know why they are in exile. I haven't read up on the lore so far, but uh, it seems like a kind of fun warband like they've really gone all out on the like horror theme it's like frankenstein <laughs> zombies <laughs> yeah and i think they've, they've gone all out on, on the mechanics as well this is a very interesting warband mechanic wise if it's good or not i guess we have to conclude at the the end of this video uh, or at least uh, good with as as good we think they can be before we get to play them yeah this warband is, is super interesting and its mechanics are very unique that makes it quite hard to evaluate because it's difficult to compare it to something. There's nothing really that comparable to this. Um, um, I think there are some innate problems with this warband if we start out first. Alright, so let's take a look at, at uh, the fighters that make up the Exile Dead. Uh, so first of all, it's a 7 fighter warband. Yeah. Which makes it one of the largest warbands we have seen. Yeah, it's kind of like a, the playstyle is going to be horde-like. You want to keep your guys together and make use of their supporting mechanic yeah swarm swarm your opponents as much yeah. as you can they, and um, they have a very interesting mechanic since five out of the seven fighters start the game inspired yeah like you have a phase of the game where you start out playing with a, like a power spike and then you move on as the game progresses into another dynamic like you lose some of their power as they uninspire when they come back from the dead yeah, because when these fighters are killed, or at least the the conduit fighters and also regulars can be brought back from the dead. And uh, if they are brought back to the dead, they are uninspired. And uh, their uninspired side also has some different attacks and stuff compared to the inspired side. So it's kind of like, not like they inspire when they uninspire, but at least they change a little bit uh, during the game when they when that happens. Which yeah, is it's, quite it's interesting. Um, definitely, as you, as you said, interesting because it isn't strictly that they are worsened when they uninspired. No, they're so, different. <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, so like they like you have to probably play them or use them in like slightly different ways when they depending on the, which side is up on their fighter card. Yeah, but they have some some super interesting mechanics and okay. they have like two teams. We have the uh, 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 Preston's Markov and Regulus Inspired and these two kind of work together as one of the teams. Yeah. And then we have the leader Dentalos that works together with the four other Conduit fighters, which yeah. is quite quite uh, interesting to have like two groups. Yeah, and uh, they complement each other like kind of well because uh, the Intalos can then act as like one subset that coordinates his group of weaker minions but they are more numerous and then you have Prentice Markov that uses Regulus to like try to inspire himself deal some more hefty damage as he comes in and he is also able to take a direct hit which none of the other fighters are with their mere two health yeah, and he's also quite interesting since he has a range 2. Alright, so let, let's take a look at the first like, tag team. We have Prentice Markov and Regulus. Yeah, and uh, they're, I guess they are the power couple of, of, <laughs> of this warband. We have uh, Regulus, the, the enforcer, and we have Prentice, the puppet master, which yeah. ties good into her ability. Uh, but if we start with Regulus, he has a movement of 3. He rolls one defensive die, looking for shields, and he has 3 life. Which is quite respectable as far as a minion goes. Yeah, I think so as well. Uh, like, and that attack with the pitted halberd, looking for a smash and then dealing two damage at range two, that's perfectly fine. Like yeah. for this kind of war fighter. And having that that range two, that that makes a massive difference. It's so nice to be able to stand this one one hex away and yeah, point at uh, things. Yeah, exactly. And then you have the rest of the warbands like being up front, and the regulars comes in from behind and pokes yeah. the. And it's especially nice in a warband like this when you can swarm a lot, so you won't get in the way of your own fighters if you yeah. stand a bit away. So, uh, but uh, he works really good together with the uh, uh, Prentice Markov. Yeah, uh, which has a kind of like a different set of uh, characteristics and stat lines. Uh, three movement isn't great, 
Uh, to evade, however, is perfectly fine on the, the yeah. front side of a fighter more, car. More than fine. <laughs> yeah, and then three health probably ensures that he uh, survives uh, the initial encounter. Then he has a kind of lackluster bone saw, which is two smash dealing one damage with Grievous. Isn't great, isn't... I, I it's won't... definitely below average. Below average. But, but since they work best as a team, because of his ability Puppeteer, and it's an action... Uh, this fighter and a friendly Regulus can each make one action. Then place up to one friendly out of action Regulus in an empty hex within two hexes and give that Regulus one race counter. Reactions cannot be used during this action. Yeah. And when Regulus comes back this way, he, uh, re he loses a minor fighting capability. He goes to looking from looking for Smash to looking for Fury. But yeah. other than that, he's the same Regulus. Yeah, he's basically the same. The same Regulus. Is he the same after he died and come? <laughs> no one knows. Yeah. But, but he looks the same, at yeah. least feels the same. And because of because the fact that they, they work great together, I think the the like weaker attack from, from Prentice Markov is like alright. Yeah, because you basically read this uh, puppeteer action as like Activate Regulus, make a charge action, deal like two smash, deal two damage, and then you can also activate Prentice Markov, make a charge, uh, smash, and then deal one damage, so potentially dealing three in one turn. Yeah, and, and this works well because uh, the inspire mechanic of Prentice Markov is a friend of Regulus makes uh, a friend of Regulus attack action succeeds. So yeah. a nice way to play it is, as you said before, you charge in with Regulus, you make one attack with him. And if it succeeds, then Prentice Markov inspires, and the next turn, you can use the action Puppeteer. Uh, and no, no, wait. Uh, you can't use that then. Because yeah. then uh, Prentice Markov, if he also made a charge action, then he can't activate it. No, but you don't need to... Uh, you, oh, yes, 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 You first, uh, like you said before, you, yeah, yeah, like, you yeah. charge in with Regulus, you make an attack... And if that succeeds, then Prentice Marco will inspire. And in your next activation, you can make the action puppeteer. You can charge him with Markov as well, and you get to hit once yeah. more with Regulus. And if if all of those attack actions succeed, you're potentially done like six, seven damage. Yeah. If just a few of them do, three, four damage. So um, I, that has to be quite all right. Yeah, I, quite I, right. I, I do think you are right. Uh, now I understand what you mentioned. And uh, mentioning it like that, I think this is probably a prime target for the opponent when they figure out how dangerous and how much damage this can deal. Because yeah, they're, they're scarier than they look. Yeah, yeah, like uh, like three damage is enough to take out most modern fighters and against one of the newer warbands, you can potentially take out two minions in a turn with these. Yeah. And that can. would really hurt and, and hinder another like warband. Yeah, and one, one thing you should mention as well is that Regulus, he's, he's considered a beast, so he can't have attack action upgrades. But Prentice Markov does not have that restriction. She is, or he or she, I'm not sure, is not a beast, so you could give, uh, give him attack action upgrades to make yeah, him even like stronger. Strap, slap a great strength on this one, and then you have Regulus come in, deal two damage, and then Markov and he's inspired comes in deal three damage that yeah. is really dangerous or just give him an extra die when he attacks when yeah, he's inspired he's attacking with three dice looking for for hammers with two damage in in the beginning yeah like that's good yeah that's i, I think this is probably like like the backbone of the warband like uh, we'll get into the, the other part of the warband but these ones are the the things that make me uh, like look forward to playing this warband i yeah. think uh, if you are a good player and make use of Markov and Regulus, you'll uh, deal quite a good amount of damage. And yeah. Regulus being able to come back as well, like if you are playing against someone that is going defensive, you can just use Regulus and then just bring him back over and over with Markov. And that's going to be super annoying for the opponent. Yeah, uh, the best way to fight, you should watch out for it if you're, you're facing them. But the best, best way to deal with them is probably to try to kill Markov. But Markov has a respectable <laughs> defense, defense role. So. Uh, but if Markov dies, there's no way of, of bringing him back. Uh, Dentalos cannot uh, raise him again. And yeah, he can't come back. 
And if he's dead, then when Regulus dies, he can't come back either. So. Yeah, and Regulus going down to just being able to activate himself isn't really all that great. No, like, then it starts to be lackluster. I think you need to move them, move them together. Yeah, and especially if Regulus has died one so that he loses the smash and goes to Fury instead. Yeah. But uh, then we have the, the rest of the warband, the, the other five-man group, so to speak. Yeah, yeah. and uh, I figured that we should mention what conductive means, because that is a specific warband for this warband that we haven't seen or heard about before. Yeah, I guess so, and it, it uh, a bit of it kind of speaks for itself, conductive, but uh, it's a keyword that makes, uh, makes Minion being able to, to make at actions together, you can say. And I think it says it's very good, the, the dance dynamic that Dantalos has. It's an action and it says pick, move or attack. Uh, pick, move or attack. Each friendly conductive fighter can make one action of that kind. Then place up to one friendly out of action conductive minion in an adjacent hex two or more hexes from each enemy fighter and give that minion one race counter. Reactions cannot be used during this action. Yeah. So, like, the theme of this is that the Intellus, the Exile, the leader of the warband, is the wizard that has been raising all these zombies, and uh, he or she stands in the back and just conducts all of these zombies. Yeah, and if you look at the, the, the models, they have, like, nails in them, or, like, conductors, and I'm guessing that conducting energy or lightning into them, she can control them or, or, or in some kind of way. Yeah, yeah. and um, it's kind of the theme of like the playstyle of this warband as well. Like since each of their individual fighters are kind of weak, uh, you want to stack them up close together, and then you get some additional bonuses if you manage to do so from certain upcoming cards that we'll discuss later. Yeah, and I said that before, but this kind of reminds me of, of Kainan Reapers, the way they move together. Yeah. Uh, they have that uh, that stride thing where they can move move together, and, and these guys can as well. And they're the same amount in, in numbers, and they have similar stats on the fighters as well. Yeah. But they, they do have some uh, like additional uh, like clunkiness, because dance dynamic means that you can only make the move or the attack action, whereas... With Kainos Reaper you can charge one guy forward and then you have a supporting fighter come up next to them and then you get like a, a good attack in. These yeah. ones you have to plan it out, like either you attack with them all or you make movement actions with them all. Yeah, but I think it's quite interesting. I think you a lot of the time the, the place you do is, is standing in the back with Dentalos, use dance dynamic and either make a move or an attack and you probably very rarely activate the individual fighters. You, a lot yeah. of times I think you use, use Dantalos uh, to, <laughs> to move about your warband. Even though that makes you a bit slower since you're not using like charges and stuff. But I think it's worth it since you can move them as a five, four man team. And that makes them scary. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, I think the, a common occurrence with this warband is going to be that the opponent charges in. They kill one of your zombies. And then you activate dance dynamic. You move all your zombies into position and you raise the one that was just killed yeah. and then uh, their fighter has a charge action. They can't push him or her out of the way. Yeah, and the next dance dynamic, yeah, three of them are hitting, the one who died moves in and the next time all four are hitting. Yeah. You can die. You can <laughs> yeah, and if they want to save their fighter, then they are going to close in on your horde of zombies and then they are in right position to get hit the upcoming turns. Yeah. So it's gonna be a, like a really, if, if the opponent plays into it, you are gonna be like alternating between moving and hitting with everyone. Yeah. And, and one thing to mention as well is that you can use dance dynamic to move your fighters how many times you want. Yeah. You, if you have a move token on one of the fighters, you can still use the dance dynamic to make them move. Yeah, you just keep stacking movement and the same goes for Puppeteer if it wasn't like I was kind of unclear about that as well. Like, yeah, you can as long as Markov doesn't have a charge action, then you can just keep on puppeteering and then, yeah, yes, move regulars around. Yeah, you can move regulars around, and you, yeah, you can't move Markov if you have a, a move or charge token, but otherwise, you can activate them as many times as, as you like. Um, so that makes it quite quite difficult because they have I know all of them have quite low movement. They have a movement of, of three, all four of these these fighters, conduit fighters. Some of them have, have two when uninspired. But since you can 
make the move many times in a turn, they can still close that distance. Yeah. I mean, and uh, there, there's actually some upcoming objectives that we'll talk about as well that do care about you stacking those movement tokens. Yeah. I don't know exactly how worthwhile it's gonna be. Like, I could see an argument being made for playing these guys defensively and then try to get them to feature tokens and try to control the battle that way. Because you are gonna be the one that is able to activate the most number of fighters. Yeah. But you are also the one that is like, you're, you're gonna struggle if you ever lose Dane Talos. So I would probably like almost never make a charge action with him. Now be, be careful with, with uh, him or her, at least when you're playing. We have two new assassin warbands coming, so yeah. <laughs> watch your back. Uh, but all of these four minions are, are quite similar. They all have a movement of three. They're rolling one defensive die looking for shields. And all of them have two life, at least when inspired. Yeah. I know that some of them go down to two. Two movement when, when I'm inspired. Yeah. Uh, and then you have Coil, the zombie with the big hand dealing two damage with Overlord, and then the rest of them deal one damage. Yeah, and o Overlord gives them one plus damage if this uh, attack action targets a staggered fighter. Yeah. So, and uh, that is also like, it's kind of like you can look at Games Workshop designing these warbands. I think that they spent a good deal of time trying to figure out the warband that has like. Clever synergies with their own fighters, like uh, things that can uh, like really activate a player and try to make like those cool synergies happen. Yeah, I think this this is a very interesting warband, and all of these minions as well are also beasts, so you can't give them attack action upgrades. And I think if you could, they would start to become like broken strong after a while. Yeah. Like it, it, it can quickly get out of hand. You can give upgrades to like three of these fighters and they move and attack together. Like, no, that's gonna be too yeah. strong after a while. <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking that, uh, we'll get into that, but imagine if you could uh, like make the opponent uh, get into your uh, like uh, proximity. Yeah. Like pushing opponent's fighters comes to mind. <laughs> yeah, there's stuff like that you, you can do. Center of uh, attention. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there are some of those you could, could definitely use. Yeah. But we'll, yeah. we'll uh, get into that later. Yeah, but uh, we can take a, uh, end up with, with looking at, at uh, dental also. Should we look at all of these individual fighters? They're not that interesting. Oh, we should mention that uh, since you are going to lose them uh, over the game, uh, when they come back, they lose their overload ability and instead they get their arcs ability. Yeah. Which is that you start adding attack dice if you are close and next to another conductive minute, minion. Yeah, or and this also fighter. says for each conductive. So you can gain, yeah, in best case you gain, what, three, four? <laughs> four, yeah, but then you can't hit anything. Four, four is unlikely, <laughs> but three, three, three yeah. uh, two is more likely. Yeah. But uh, the problem with them is that uh, whilst you upgrade their capability to like hit, you diminish uh, like their capability of dealing damage. So yeah. it's a like give and take. But they do give sighting if that that somehow <laughs> would come into play and yeah. against certain warbands. And while they can't by themselves have attack uh, attack modifiers, there are some cards that modify their attacks via their leader. So we're gonna yeah. come into that as well. Yeah. Um, and uh, uh, we should also like briefly touch on Dayan Talos, the exile. When you do manage to use your fighters to kill a another a po a po a hostile fighter, he inspires, and then he uh, or she gets the the staff, the staff dy dynamic. I think it's called stay dynamic. I don't. Yeah. So she. That's. It's a bit weird. It doesn't really make sense. She can't hit with her staff until she's inspired, which is a bit weird. But it's a decent attack. Range of two, rolling three dice and dealing two damage with stagger. Yeah. yeah. But it's uh, like, I think that like getting stagger on the inspire step on the staff is kind of weird because. If you are in like the later stage of the game when you have your leader inspired, then some of your fighters are gonna have have been raised, and then they lose any like uh, dynamics with the stagger mechanic. Yeah, I, I guess so. But um, you, you might have one or two that is overloaded, so I don't know. But yeah, it's, I, it's quite hard. Like making a su successful attack action and kill one is it's not a given. Like I, we played a lot of games with like kind of reapers and and uh, Sarvis kids and all those like weaker fighters. Uh, but 
They stay alive for longer than you think, yeah. <laughs> a lot of the time. And she's also level 2 wizard. So this warband has two wizard, uh, yeah. both uh, Markov and, and Lentos. Um, that, that's kind of good. I think that this is a good way of designing a warband to make sure that the, uh, one of the problems with uh, uh, spell cards being that if you kill the wizard, then the opponent is going to end up with a bunch of dead cards in their deck. Yeah. And now, at least if, if Dantelos dies, you have Markov, so the card is not dead. It's less useful, but it's not dead. Yeah. And the other way around, of course. Yeah. yeah but um, what do, do, do we want to say anything about the models themselves? Um, like, looking at the, the figures, I think this is going to be fun to paint. I think they're going to be fun to paint. I think they're going to be... A lot of the, the models are very, very detailed that they release for Warhammer Underworlds. And that's kind of a bit of the selling point. Like you have these unique models. But having too many details on a lot of models made them a bit daunting to paint. And I think these are very cool by, while also not being too detailed to feel daunting. So. Yeah. Okay. But um, in, in order to evaluate the Warband... Uh, we're gonna look at each of the objective cards and then each of the power cards and then we're gonna take a look at the Grand Alliance card and the Universal cards that comes with the Exile Dead. Yeah. And uh, we have a ranking system which probably most of you, anyone that plays any card games are familiar with. We rank them A to from very playable, a, a warband staple uh, to E uh, which is a card that is very unlikely gonna be beneficial if you include it in your deck. Yeah, like it's problematic, unlikely to do anything. Or... Might be completely unplayable. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, and we're gonna look at that. We have like four cards per per slide or what you want to call it. And yeah, we're gonna go through every single one of them and, and give 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 us your thoughts on them. Yeah. Uh, so let's start out by reading out the cards and then we can alternate back and forth and then you. Then, yeah. The, yeah. So starting with the first card, we have Alternating Strikes. It's a search objective that reads, score this immediately after an activation step in which two or more friendly fighters each made one or more attack actions. So do you like it or not? Yeah, I definitely like it. Uh, considering how this warband plays, both you have the, the dance mechani mechanic and you have the puppet master, you're very likely to be able to, to pull this off. Um, yeah. And you can make it work with either uh, Apprentice Markov or Dean Talos. Yeah, and I, I like objectives that you score by just playing the game. If you get what I mean. Like you yeah. always want to attack fighters. And you always want to use the puppeteer mechanic and the dance mechanic. So this is just going to be like, yeah, I play as I would like to play otherwise. And I'm just going to score this for free. Yeah. I don't have to take any detours, so yeah. to speak. And the, since there are no requirements of like making successful attack action, I, I just read this as an auto-include. I, I think yeah. this is the best objective in the deck. Uh, Absolute A for me. Yeah, this is an auto include for me. You would really have to explain to me why you aren't putting in, in, in this in your deck if you yeah. aren't. <laughs> like, you need to have a very good reason for that. Yeah. And uh, then we have an uh, appalling end. Surge, score this immediately after a friendly minions attack action that took a target fighter out of action. Yeah, and this goes in the same like uh, lane, like things that are likely going to happen over the course of the games. <laughs> then, then you're going to make use of the zombie dance and then you're going to hit your targets uh, and eventually kill them. Scoring a polling end quite easily. Yeah, and I think the, the play is just to stand with, with Dentalos in the back and using the dance mechanic. And yeah, and if you do that, you're eventually probably going to kill a fighter and you're going to score this. So the, this doesn't need any deviations from the game plan either. And that's just good. Like I, uh, alternating strike is a guarantee. Like there, there's no require, no like, and this needs to happen. But but appalling end, you actually need to take your fighter out of action, which is extremely likely that you'll do during the game. But you could also be facing Morgus crushes, and can you kill one of them first turn? Maybe, maybe yeah, not. It, it, exactly. And that, that puts it down a little bit, yeah, but, but uh, still a solid B for me. I think this is a good card that you want to include or consider. Yeah, I say B, B plus. Uh, I also be be. Uh, I probably include this in, in most of my decks. I see no reason not to put this in. Yeah. So then we have another surge objective. Direct strike. Score this immediately after a friendly fighter's attack action that deals three or more damage. Meaning yeah. that you need to make a successful attack and you need to actually deal the damage. 
Yeah, and, and this reminds me quite a lot of Search of Aggression, which is deal 4 damage, right? Or when you gain the Primus token. Yeah. So, and uh, that yeah. card definitely sees, sees play. Yeah, it's even restricted, so yeah, yeah quite uh, strong. But it, it's better for different kinds of warbands. Yeah. Like that, that kind of card, I wouldn't play that card in this warband. No, uh, um, four is one damage too much for to reliably deal. But three is like, that's reasonable. Like get one upgrade on either uh, one of the stronger fighters and you will most likely make this happen naturally over the course of the game, I think. So this, this is a bit harder to score than you might think at first glance. Like in, in yeah. some warbands, this would just be absolutely broken. Yeah, but, but you, you can make it happen with, uh, like, if you stagger a target with the Intalas, which uh, she has the staff, which can stagger from one attack, and then you make the follow up attack yeah. with uh, Overload. Uh, yeah, then you deal three damage. So yeah, you, do, you can actually make this happen without any upgrades or support. Yeah. So I, I'd say this is a decent card. It's, uh, it requires a bit bit more of a setup than the other two two objectives we looked at, but yeah. it's it's good. Yeah, and, and when you get that attack in, deal three damage, score a search objective, it feels so good. I mean, I, I kind of like ranked it at a B B minus. I think it's uh, it's good. Uh, you'll consider this for deck building, and you'll be quite happy to run it. It yeah. will. I do, think this will probably like be, be quite alright. Uh, I'd probably like B minus or something for me, but I'm probably very likely to include this in yeah. my deck. And then we have Dread Puppetry. Surge. Score this immediately after a friendly Regulus is giving a race counter. And this being like a requirement that a specific fighter is ne needs to be taken out of action, and then you need to also have Markov uh, stay alive, is uh, I do fear that at times this will be a dead card. Like you get into the third round, and the opponent has wisely like focused attacked uh, apprentice Markov from out of the game, and then you can't score this. Yeah, and I feel like why would I attack Regulus? Uh, like there are probably situations where you would, but most of the time you would rather focus the the controlling fighters, Dantalus and, and Markov. I don't think it's bad. I think it's it will quite likely happen in uh, a substantial amount of games to making this uh, like yeah. worthwhile considering. Yeah, it's definitely not not terrible. But but I I don't I really like the objectives that you're kind of in the hands of your opponent. Yeah. You you are uh, like whether or not you can score it depends on what your opponent does, and that's always a bad situation to be in where you don't have control. C, C minus, C, I don't know. Yeah. So I put it in the C now. range as well. I think, uh, consider it. Uh, we'll have to, this is one of the cards that we'll have to play test a bunch of times to make sure that we are correct about. Yeah, th this is really difficult to evaluate uh, because he might be more annoying than you think, so you might have to attack him <laughs> and yeah. kill him. Okay, moving on. Dynamic Chain. This is a dual objective that reads, score this in an end phase if each surviving friendly conductive fighter is adjacent to one or more friendly conductive fighters. And those fighters are in a single group. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not so sold on that, this one. And the main reason is because Dentalos is also a conductive fighter. If he or she wasn't, I would be more sold. But since she is one of them, I'm not sure I want to move move her up together with them. I'm not that sure. Yeah, like, and it's in an end phase as well. Like, imagine if you are not the, if you don't have the last activation. Mm -hmm. Then it might be the case that the you have your conga line set up and then they just move in and attack one of the fighters. Knowing that these cards exist yeah. and try to break your formation. And uh, I mean, this is also one of those, it's, it's definitely not terrible. It, it's definitely scorable and, and the, the, it's not too difficult. No, and but if it, you are in the late stage of the game so that you only have two conductive fighters, then, you, then you're out to score it, basically. Yeah, the, but, the later uh, you come. Or, or the, the problem is if Dantalos is dead, this is going to be really hard to score because then you yeah, might have exactly. <laughs> yeah, four fighters. <laughs> but, uh, I think we can like try to play defensively. We'll, we'll try to keep uh, Dantalos uh, alive. Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, but it, this is just like run of the mill for me. Yeah, man. C, it's, C, it's, C range. Yeah, so, somewhere around that. It, it's an alright card. Yeah. And then we have Forbidden Lore. 
Score this on the end phase if each surviving friendly fighter has one or more charge token and or one or more move tokens. I think this one has potential. I think like with the dance mechanic and uh, Prentice Markov and Regulus uh, moving together, I probably think that you'll manage this one almost each round. Yeah, you only, only need two activations to be able to score this. You can do the dance with, with uh, Dantalos and then you can do the puppet with, with Markov and then you will have been able to remove every single fighter. Yeah, like the, the only thing that I think can be a minor, minor issue is that if you are like down to your fourth activation and you haven't made that move action with Dantalos and you want to make an attack action and you have this in hand, then you need to make a choice. Yeah, I, yeah, I guess so, yeah. But not most times I think that you are going to make move actions with Daintalos. That said, if Daintalos is taken out of action, this card is probably unscorable. It's dead, yeah. It's dead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I, say, I probably think this card is very good. Yeah. I think this is like a B plus. Yeah, and it's very similar to the next card. Yeah. Force Dynamic. Score this in an end phase if one or more friendly fighters each have two or more move tokens. And this is one of the, the cards that we discussed a lot back and forth uh, yeah. off, off camera. And this one is, is a bit tricky. And what we, we ended up with is that you're probably gonna have to, to use Dentalos to score this. And you're probably gonna have to use your zombie horde, move your zombie horde twice using the dance mechanic yeah. to score this um, in, a, in a reliable way. If you are a defensive warband and if, if you are playing the deck that wants to like take all the feature tokens and score objectives, then possibly you are, can like make it work um, because you need to uh, like allocate half your turn just scuttling zombies around. And is that really what you want to do with this warband? No, I, and I guess the, the, this would be really, card, uh, really good if, if uh, the dance mechanic was worded differently. Because now you choose move or attack and everyone, all the fighters do the same action. But if you can choose for every single fighter, move or attack, yeah, then, then, this, could, fighter uh, will, then, then this card would really Yeah, really then, then this card would be really good, I think, so as um, well. And you have one additional risk as well. Like, that is the opponent... Killing your your zombie like imagine that you have activated a single zombie and you want to follow it up with the dance mechanic and then Yeah, I don't but know. I, I think it, this it, is um, This is not difficult to score either like no. in almost every turn This is almost never gonna be a dead card like no. this very rarely you have lost both Dantalos and and the other dude Yeah, like if you pl pl deploy defensively and you have this in your opening hand I, I should probably try to play make this happen like Put my fighters on, on feature tokens that I want them at, wait for the enemy come to me and then score force dynamic. Yeah, um, uh, it's, it's nice in, in the way that you mentioned that if you had it in your starting hand, you can deploy a bit more defensively. And then you can use this, you can score an early glory point and get a nice upgrade down. Yeah. So it, it's a decent card. I'm probably gonna, gonna have to give this like a B as well. Uh, I, I, don't think I, it, I think I rank it slightly worse. I think it's a C for me. I think, yeah, B, B, C. Then we have the card Meat Locker, Dual. Score this in end phase if each surviving enemy fighter is in enemy territory and each surviving friendly min minion is in enemy territory. So this is like the zombie horde scenario. <laughs> you have all the zombies moving over the field and then the opponent is scared, uh, waiting for your guys to come and overrun them. But... Realistically speaking, this is a really terrible card because it requires each enemy fighter to stay in their territory and that is something that you don't have control over and you also need to like get your whole team of like all your fighters across the board and they only have three movement. Yeah, two and uninspired, uh, yeah. some of them. But it gives three glory, which is nice. But yeah. you're you're putting your Dantalos and and uh, your other dude Apprentice oh, Marco. Apprentice Marco. Yeah, you're putting those too much at risk if you're playing that that aggressively. I think. So yeah, I don't really like this. This is like, uh, it's not completely unplayable. Like a D. I I think it is unplayable. I'll give it an E. I'm a bit harsher on these cards. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess it's yeah. But it's it's three glory. That's that's why I give it a D. Uh, and those cards are hard to come by nowadays. Yeah. So let's take a look at mobile resistors. Uh, the card art is kind of fun on this, but it reads dual. Score this in an end phase if 
Each surviving friendly conductive fighter is added onto one or more friendly conductive fighters and one or more of those fighters is on an objective token. It's quite similar to the, the card we reviewed earlier. Yeah, but each surviving friendly conductor is adjacent. So they all need to be in a group, yeah. but not in one single group anymore. Now they can be in many different groups, but at least one of them needs to be an, ob an objective. No. For one glory? That seems a lot of work. Yeah, I think so as well. It, it's weird, but uh, it's not quite all that unlikely to happen as well. I, I initially gave this card a hard rating, like harsh rating, but I, I think you can make this happen at times. So I'll, I'll give it a C, I think. Yeah, I'll probably give this card a D, maybe. Uh, I don't really like it. Like it, it might be be better. It's probably better than the card we just reviewed, but that gives three glory, and this is like no, too much things can happen to make this this. Uh, yeah, not work. It, so, it, yeah, I don't, it I don't comes, like. It's quite situational, and that dual requirement is is uh, like weird because if you don't have the uh, final activation and then the opponent charges in and kills one of your fighters so that one conductive minion is left al standing alone, yeah, then then you don't fulfill the requirement. If it was so. two glory, I'll, I'll be a bit nicer, but yeah. now I think I give it a D. All right, stench of dynamism. Score this in the end phase if your warband cost three or more spells in the preceding phase. And it's a two glory card, meaning that at first glance this seems like kind of like interesting because both of you, uh, you and I, we like the spell mechanic of Underworlds. Yeah. I think there are some innate problems with it and we'll probably discuss it in an upcoming video. Yeah. But this card, like it has the mathematics against it because it has a like innate problem. Even if you just like, try to get three attacks off with Dane Talos, using the dance mechanic, where you attack with your zombies and Dane Talos, each conductive fighter. Then you run into the problem that you are not, like, mathematically likely to make three successful spell actions on one uh, whole round. Because looking for uh, channel, or lightnings, as we call them, yeah. you have three lightning symbols and then you have one crit, making it 4 out of 6 uh, results on a uh, 1 die and then you roll 2 dice, uh, which is quite likely, it's like 89% likely, yeah. uh, which is, it, it's a like decent amount, but then you are you have to make that 3 times, that, which is 3 fourths chance of making it yeah. happen. And we're still in quite likely territory, yeah. but there's more problems. Yeah, and, and that's like... That, that's like taking into consideration that you are like allocating three activations of your turn, which does have to include uh, the Intalos making an attack action. And that is probably fine if you get two glory points, but you are not always going to be able to have a fighter within range of the Intalos. So yeah. you need to like combine it with other spell cards in your deck. And if you start including other cards that require like, for example, double channel results to be cast, or you require focus instead of channel, then you like decrease those mathematical chances even further. So I, I, I think this this card is like problematic because it requires like the, the innate problem with spellcasting in Underworlds pushes this card into like yeah, but worse we, territory. It's kinda of hard to, to explain in, in a good way, but we did the, the maths on this. And if you have like five spells in your deck, right? And you need at least two of them, or you want two of them at hand, two, yeah. any of them. There's like a 37% chance that you're going to have two of them at hand, or something along those yeah. lines. Um, and then you need to succeed with those as well to fulfill this condition. And even if you're quite likely to, to succeed one individual spell, doing it many times in a row, then it starts to get more and more likely. And we have the added problem that most of the spells in Warhammer Underworlds are quite weak. They're a bit lackluster, and that makes it even more problematic. So I think this this is one of the cards that, that that's deceiving. Yeah. It look looks better than it is. I I don't like this too much. I, I don't. Initially, I was like really pessimistic about this card because I have such a strong opinion that uh, spellcasting in other words could be better. And um, that said. Like, you can use Dane Talos and like, if you are able to attack each turn, 
And then you do play that deck, which includes five, possibly even six spell cards. You can probably force this to happen. Like. Yeah, but I, 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 it's like a C, C minus for me. I think it's a. I personally still keep it in the D range. I think this card is gonna like. People are gonna include it in their decks, and they are gonna be looking forward to casting spells. But they are gonna be like after a couple of games, they're gonna like ponder why do I never score this card. Yeah, or, or why, why can't I include these other good things that I want to include instead of these spells? <laughs> yeah. So, um, but this is one of the cards that I'm happy to take a discussion on as well. Because I, I think that when you run the numbers, you see a pattern and then you have to like respect that and like really consider like, is this mathematically likely to happen? And I, I say it's not. No. I, think, I say this is a problematic card. Yeah, I think so too. And uh, then we have Strict Tutor. Score this in end phase if a friendly Markov casts one or more spells in the preceding phase. Yeah, and like we we, we ranted lo quite long about spell casting being a problem, so I'll just say my ranking D. <laughs> Markov is a bad spell caster, and <laughs> yeah, but but it's only one, which only one makes spell. it more interesting. Yeah. But I'm still probably not gonna include this. Um, I won't be, it be as harsh either. I'll probably give this a C since it's only one spell. But right. it's then again, it's one glory. Yeah, but, but imagine that you want to cast your spell. You have the Entalus alive. Are you gonna like lower your chance of getting the effect of to score this plus getting the spell? Uh, or risk getting nothing and then having this card left in your hand? No, probably not. Uh, but there are one way you could make both of these cards work, and it's using one of the cards that come later in, in the review that makes all spells have plus one die, one of the uh, domain cards. And if you have those as well, like playing with Marco and yeah, casting it, one die, it, it might, it might right. be a build around, like stench of dynamism and strict tutor, or like if you build around them, they, they might go up in value. Yeah. But then you're pushing it, I think. If you, if you wonder what this was, I'm eating a crab cookie. <laughs> <laughs> crab cookies. <laughs> no, crab cookie. <laughs> okay. Uh, but let's move on. Let's take a look at the Dead Unbound. Score this in an end phase if one or more surviving friendly conductive minions are uninspired. I like this. Because you are... One of your minions are gonna die sometime. And you are gonna be able to bring it back. And then you score this. I... This seems like one of those you just would score naturally without yeah. having to try. Yeah, I think this one just reads basically get into an end phase, get a glory point. Yeah, I guess I, so. I, I gave this on a. I think this is like one of the cards that goes straight into the game plan of this format. Like <laughs> the game plan isn't to lose <laughs> fighters, but it will happen. Yeah, it will happen. And yeah, this is just a good card uh, in my opinion. I'm gonna give this like, uh, yeah, B plus, A minus. Yeah. Uh, something like that. Uh, then we move on to said power cards and we're gonna st take uh, a look at some of the spell cards because this is a spell oriented warband and they do have some spell cards included. We start off with channeled dynamism. It's a gambit spell requiring one lightning or one channel. If cast each friendly conductive fighters move characteristic is four. This effect persists until the end of the phase. We have seen this card in like in Kynan's Reapers, and you just get to play it. Yeah, then you, it's, it's like a, it's I don't it's conditional, which I don't like. That that is the problem with, with spells, I guess. But it's not a not a bad card, especially if, if when you fight to start to get uninspired. But the thing is, you could could fail this as well, and that's not very fun. Yeah, but and if you have uh, the Entalus alive. Uh, just requiring one channel is a nine nine times out of ten you will get. This. Yeah, you have like eighty seven percent or something like that. Eighty nine, I'm not yeah. sure. Yeah. So yeah. it's it's not like like it is the effect like on average worth uh, missing out one tenth of a time, and if you do have those other objectives where you care about casting spells, this is probably one of the cards that I would include. Yeah, I, I guess so, but it's. Do you need it? Uh, one of move is one of those those uh, things that you rarely need. You need it. You, there's it's super nice when you get a really high number because then you get to pick and choose 
exactly what you want to do. Yeah, you have that one that is like wings, and you get two plus movements through the next charge action and stuff like that. Then it comes like a surprise, and it's like, bam, yeah, out of you nowhere. charge into your but backgrounds, attack your weak fighter to try to hide away, and just. But kill this them. is like one plus movement when they're inspired, but two plus when they're uninspired. It, it's it's all right. It's a decent card. If if you want to move your zombie horde across the board and into the yeah. enemy territory, I guess you might need this actually, but. Yeah, it's probably like a C for me. It's it's not yeah. bad, not good. Yeah, C C for me as well. Then we have Corpse Light Globe. It's a gamut spell looking for Swirlis. And if cast, choose one enemy fighter adjacent to one or more conductive minions. You can reroll one attack dice in the attack rolls for friendly conductive fighters attack action that target the chosen fighter. This effect persists until the end of the phase or until the chosen fighter is taken out of action. Yeah, I just wish that they would just have wrote like stagger one minion adjacent to one of your conductive fighters. Yeah, I, I guess so. Because that's exactly what it does. It staggers them. Yeah, it, it does without giving them the stagger keyword. Yeah, which is also <laughs> weird because your guys carry, care about staggering opponents. But then it might be, be really strong because it's you can reroll one attack dice in attack rolls for like all conductive fighters attacking this. Fighter. Yeah, but then it would at least like have some usability in its current state. I think it's just a weak card. Like, I I disagree. It's it's not a great card, but I think it's better than Channel Dynamism. I think it's a better spell because I think the reroll uh, is uh, is more important than the movement. Yeah, like the, the idea. Uh, but there are there are this uh, this lower chance to cost it as well. Yeah. Um, but it's. It, yeah, it's still like a C. It's like marginally better, but it's not trashed here. I don't think so. I think mm. it, I think this like is gonna be one of the car the, the cards where you just like try to cast it, you end up failing, or then like your zombies having such weird attack rolls that you might not always need a reroll, and you probably want two zombies to benefit from this to making it worthwhile. I'll give it a D. D, D plus, perhaps. Then we have the Dance of Dentalos, Gambit spell looking for two lightning. If cast, pick, move or attack. Each friendly inspired conductive fighter can make an, an action of the kind you pick. Player cannot use reactions while this spell is being resolved. And this is one of the cards that is really, really hard to evaluate this spell. Because uh, the first requirement of needing two uh, lightning symbols makes this extremely unlikely to be cast reliably. Yeah. Uh, you, you'll end up uh, casting the spell uh, like far less often than you want to. And then on the other hand, the effect is really, really strong. Like, yeah. Ideally, you have just activated Day in Talos, you have moved all your zombies, and then you follow up with this Dance of Day in Talos, and then you pick attack, and then you just hammer the target down. So the upside of, of this card is really, really high. Yeah, it's, it's definitely a great upside. And if it was only like one lightning, it would be an incredibly strong spell. Yeah, I, so, I think it would be broken at one. Yeah, but, but since it has two, it makes it quite a lot worse. But this is, this is one of those like, is it worth the risk? Or the chance of getting this? Like, yeah, because, if you succeed, uh, then... then uh, yeah, you basic, great rewards. <laughs> yeah, you basically get one full activation. Like I, I think that this card, I, I'm, I'm pessimistic against like double channel symbols, but this is one of the cards where I would actually like include it just because of the potential upside. You could, you could break the game with this. Yeah. Like uh, move up, position three zombies, deal five damage. Yeah, but but it's it's still not like. It's, yeah, it's yeah. too conditional. It's yeah, still it's too unreliable. Yeah, so like this is probably like like a C, maybe. D. I like rolling dice, so I, I'll put it in the B range for me. I think this card, when you do manage to land it, you can absolutely devastate. Certain yeah, but weapons. I think this is one of those people are gonna think this is really good, and they're gonna be a bit disappointed. Yeah, because it's gonna fail a lot of the times. It's gonna fail a lot of times, and you, if you end up with this card in the later stages of the game. Yeah, and yeah, then you might have no dental loss on the board, and then it's dead card. Yeah, I'm gonna take another bite of my crab cookie. <laughs> uh, moving on, we have the dynamic cage. Choose one enemy fighter adjacent to two or more 
friendly conductive fighters deal one damage to the chosen fighter. I think this is really good. Uh, there's been been a few other cards that are like deal deal one damage, uh, slip slip rock crap or yeah. whatever that I can't pronounce. And the fish poison. <laughs> yeah, those come to mind and those are are good. And uh, since they all move together, the conductive fighters. Like if you have one fighter adjacent, you probably have two. Like because yeah. they move together. So this it's not a hard condition to fulfill and just one one damage, especially when you keep it on hand and wait for the perfect opportunity, uh, this can be really important. Yeah, and I think this has actually additional value in this set because we have been seeing more and more illusion upgrades that really see play. I think yeah. this card being able to deal one damage, remove the illusionary upgrade, and then you get to follow up with a full strength attack. I think this is good. This is, this is an A for me. Yeah. Not much more to say. It's just good. Yeah, it's good. Run it, play it, be yeah. happy with it. Yeah. <laughs> then we have some more spells. We have Necrotic Curse. Gambit spell looking for one lightning. If cast, choose one enemy fighter within four hexes of the caster. Deal one damage to the chosen fighter and stagger that fighter. Then deal one damage to the cost. Taking damage on your own caster isn't ideal, but I think the upside of the being able to deal damage out of activation and out of attacks is sufficiently high that I would like to include this card and consider it quite a lot of times. I think I like this card probably. Uh, even with the problem with spell casting, this is one of those I would make Dane Talos cast and then like even if it pushes him slightly into the lethal range of just having three health left. Yeah, it's a lot of upside. Um, I think this is this is good. I will include this. It's uh, yeah, B. Yeah, C plus B minus for me. Probably B minus. I think this is sufficiently good to run, uh, especially with the illusion upgrade condition. Yeah, and it's such good utility. You steal one damage, yeah. and, and four, that's rare. Four Fexus is 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 long. That, that, that yeah, you can play long range. Dane Talos defensively, and you can still like. Yeah, and and those cards are hard to come by. Just yeah. deal deal damage. Uh, then we have reassert control. Choose one uninspired friendly minion, heal to that fighter, remove that fighter's rage counters, that fighter is inspired. This is one of the cards I also like. Like after you one of your fighters died and they've been raised once once again, they're uninspired and with this you can just heal them full health uh, and make them inspired again. Yeah. I mean why not? It's just good utility. Yeah, and I think it also like helps with one of this warband's problems, which is that when you raise fighters they come back with one health and then I mean even uh, like the minion fighters of other warbands are going to be able to quite easily kill them again making it a problem that your opponent might just stack up on easy glory points if you keep on raising them too often. Yeah. But with this one you can bring back Regulus, making 3 health again and then just keep on hammering. Yeah, I think this is good. Well, I should I probably include this in, in most of my decks. But it's not like amazing, it's just good utility. Yeah. Uh, if, if possible, I would like to play this on Regulus, I, th I think. Uh, yeah, you can probably play this on regulars for sure, uh, but it, it might also be have some use in on the regular zombies when they have been raised since they only have a movement of two and giving them back that three is probably yeah. uh, worth it as well yeah. sometimes, yeah. Uh, but I have this at uh, AB. I, I think I'm happy to run this. I like that it's not a spell, I like that you just get to play it and then it actually happens. Yeah. Then we have a Scorching Surge, plus one damage to the first range one attack action made by a friendly conductive minion in the next activation. After that attack action, if it resulted in a critical hit, deal one damage to that minion. I mean, if the zombies actually had better attacks, then possibly I would like be more favorable uh, upon this. But like the, the problem with this card is that if you get into the late game and all of your zombies have been killed, this attack will kill them and then you, sure you deal one plus damage, but then you kill your own minions. <laughs> yeah, you doing this with, a, with an uninspired minion will kill it. But uh, I think I still think this is good because they have uh, very low low damage most of the minions and just upping them by, by one I think is significant. I think this card is, is better than you might think. Yeah, yeah, it. I have it at a C at a C range. Um, I really dislike like that damage. It's it's very flavorful. I think it's like uh, awesome uh, 
it's an awesome card in every regard other than its effect. Yeah, but, but it, it's, it's a fine card. See. Yeah, it's a, it's a decent card. Then we have Sparking Shuffle. Choose up to two friendly conductive minions, push each chosen fighter up to two hexes. This is just an A for me. Like uh, being able to push two fighters, and it's usually you have like push it closer to an enemy fighter or push it like, but this is just push yeah. wherever you want. And especially in the beginning while setting up, since they have low movement, I think this is really good. Yeah, and you can possibly like deal a really dangerous attack, like push two zombies and then uh, surprise your opponent by activating the dance and then, well, I think yeah. this is an A. I, I, I want to you play this You should include it, yeah. It's an A for me. Then we have Sudden Lurch. Reaction. Play this during an enemy fighter's attack action. After the attack roll, push a friendly regulars up to three hexes so he is adjacent to the attacker. I mean, reading this card, it's basically the exact same card as Counter Charge, only significantly worse in every aspect. <laughs> it does require Markov to stay alive. It happens after the attack, so you don't get to push him into position so that you get the supporting defensive role. And you can only play it on Regulus. I yeah, mean, but, but yeah, it might, yeah, that's right. There's stick with Markov as well, yeah. Yeah, so, so it's like three additional conditions to Counter Charge. Yes, play counter charge. Yeah, I guess so, but but is but counter charge is is good enough to include in a lot of decks, and but I don't might, think no, but like, might it be a, a place where you need two? Oh, I don't think you have the space for it. I think this warband has plenty of other cards to consider. Yeah, I, and I guess. I, I think this card is unplayable. If you want, if you want the effect, run counter charge. Don't run sudden lurch. Yeah, I, I guess so, definitely. But but that's from a, from a champion championship perspective. In, in a, like a, a rivals format, it's it's not as terrible. No, but but just the it's I guess like the evaluation wrong just wrong counter charge. Yeah. <laughs> I guess yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, it's gonna get a D from me. Yeah, I I, I think it's terrible. I think it's E. I, it's too many requirements. I mean, even if I were favorable, even if counter charge didn't exist, this card requiring so many things uh, pushes it pushes it into the unplayable territory for me. Talking about terrible, <laughs> yeah, terrible <laughs> dynamism. Choose up to two friendly conducting minions that are out of action. Place each chosen fighter in an hex adjacent to your leader. Give each chosen fighter a race counter. I think this card is interesting. Ideally, you want to use the dance to bring them back, but uh, being able to bring multiple of them back ensures that if you ever get scythed by an opponent, then you can get back into the game, get your fighters up, and then they get into a defensive position so that they can safeguard your leader. I, I kind of like this. I think this is a nice catch-up mechanic for this warband. You'll probably not play this card if you're ahead, but if you're ahead, then just ditch it and draw something else. Yeah, if you're ahead, it's not great. It's a decent catch-up mechanic. Is it an auto-include? No, I don't think so. Uh, but it definitely has, has a place in some decks. This is like a, a C+, plus, B-, minus. I don't know. Uh, I'm probably going to give this a C. But it yeah. is decent. It's, it's a decent card. I, I give it a C as well. Then we have Convert's Seal. This warband really has a lot of restrictions on which fighters to get to place their cards on, and this is restricted to Markov, and it reads plus one wounds, plus one dice to this fighter's ranged attack action. And then we should remember that Markov has uh, Grievous on his bone saw. Yeah, he has Grievous on his, his bone saw, and he rolls, when inspired, right, he rolls, did he roll two dice or three dice? Uh, two dice, yes. Yeah, uh, but then he rolls 3 in that case, dealing 2 damage with Grievous, which is, is pretty nice. So this is like a great fortitude, but better, but it's only restricted to one fighter, which makes it worse. Yeah, but it is um, the fighter where you want it. Yeah, it is where you want it. Uh, and Because I this mean, one is going to be focused by the opponent. Yeah, but, but that also gives it a greater chance to being a dead card, because he could... Yeah, die. already have died. Yeah, I could already have died. And, and with Great Fortitude, you can always put it on someone. Uh, but I still think this is, is good enough to include in your deck. I definitely think it is. And this is like a B for me. Yeah, I think that this might be a B for me as well. It's it's really hard to evaluate it's because it's going to come down to the dynamic. How often are we going to be able to keep Markov alive and make use of him? 
And then we have the upgrade crackling field. The reaction during an enemy fighter's range 1 or range 2 attack action that targeted this fighter. After the deal damage step, deal 1 damage to the attacker, then break this card. You can use this reaction even if this fighter is out of action. This is kind of weird. It's wordy. And uh, this is one other one of those cards where you deal 1 damage to your attacker like without having to attack them. And those effect, effects are gonna stack up. Like this, this card is in a better situation just because of that. Like, and and you have like incitement to try and protect uh, Dane Talos because he is one of those fighters that the opponent is interested in, like trying to kill off. Yeah, you can put this on Dane Talos if you, if you like, or you can put it on one of the minions in, in the front line. And I, I like this card, uh, I mean dealing one damage is, is not massive and your opponent can play around it, but it also, it would also limit, limit them a little bit. They probably won't be as, uh, they really have to think about, about uh, the, the consequences of attacking a fighter that has this, because only taking one extra damage could be the difference between, between life and death. And having it on, on the Intalos is just extra armor and protection. For yeah, them. and I, I see some nifty plays where you can, do, like, imagine that you're up against one of those sighting warbands once again. Yeah. And then you just place this card on the zombie that is always in the middle of your warband. So yeah. if they want to make maximum attacks, then they are going to trigger this. Yeah, I guess guess you're right. And, and in the end, all of these, like, uh, one damage attack cards that you have in, in this deck is, is, they're gonna stack up and it's gonna make a difference. Yeah, I'm gonna be scared <laughs> when I play this. Uh, so I think that's it's nice utility uh, and it's it's a bit of extra defense. So, yeah, uh, big, big card for me. I think it's slightly worse. C+, plus. this might not always, like, do what you want. But, yeah, really looking forward to trying this one out. Yeah. Then we have Dynamic Bolt, which is a spell attack action. It has a range of 3, looking for Swirlis, dealing 2 damage with Stagger. I kind of like this. I mean, you're going to use the dance uh, action quite often, and upgrading the Intalus from 1 damage to 2 damage, even if you lessen uh, her chances of actually landing the attack, is going to be impactful. Because when you get this Dynamic Bolt, uh, then you... Uh, like have a sufficient chance of landing it and then you stagger the target and then your zombie horde is just gonna rain down attacks and like really put the hurt on. Yeah, I haven't done the math on this, how much is this like damage per roll, uh, if it's actually actually that much, if it's significantly better or not, going down, going up on damage but going down in the chance of, of casting. Yeah. But I, I still think this is probably probably worth it uh, and dealing one extra damage with, with the spell is, is nice. So yeah, it, it's a decent card. I don't. I rarely like these attack action upgrades. Uh, I, I tend not to use them that much. But this one is just plain better than the one she has. So, but still, yeah, it's like a C for me. Yeah, I think uh, you're... there are better utility out there. Yeah, there are better utility, and it does take up an upgrade slot. It it's not. It's far from an auto include. It's in the C range for me as well. But um, I think this one has. Uh, viability in the in the in the game. Yeah, these are also ones I want to try, and see how it works. Yeah. Then we move on to dynamic enhancer, plus one damage to friendly conductive minions ranged one attack actions other than sighting attack actions while they are within two hexes, and you can put this either on Dane Talos or Marco. And I think this one is good. I think you don't want Dane Talos or Marco. On the front lines but when you have this upgrade it's worth it i think it's gonna it's starting to get worth the risk of having them there. i think that you quite often might have marco running up uh, like uh, yeah marco at, might with attacking with regulus and if you can move the zombie horde alongside them like plan out your movements ahead position marco well so that he is within two hexes of where he needs to be after he has made the charge action and then you just have your zombies absolutely hammer yeah. the target. I I like this. This is this has the potential to be really really nasty. Yeah. For sure. Uh, I think uh, people are, are gonna uh, start thinking twice about every action they make while this is on the table because this yeah. can turn and bad. Like, <laughs> like, yeah, like imagine the play. 
you have one unspent glory. The opponent in their activation rushes in head first, attacks one of your zombies, fails the attack. Mm. So that they are next to two or three of your zombies. Then you play this dynamic enhancer, it's onto your turn, you make the dance action, and then you just deal massive, massive yeah. damage back. I mean, that that's like, uh, this is one of like the, the few ways where you can like insta-kill every fighter in the game, Yeah. if you're lucky. I mean, you, you can move up three or four zombies, play this, make an attack action, and kill Molov. Yeah, yeah. because you have, you have your wizard, you have three or four zombies... And that's potentially like egg. <laughs> it could be, yeah. yeah, I haven't counted, egg. but it can probably be like ten damage or something yeah. like that. Uh, so, yeah, you you need to look out. Um, I think this is is good, and just the like presence of it <laughs> makes it yeah. better. I think but this is probably like maybe a weak A or or a very strong B. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think this is an A for me. I think this one has good potential, but I think that you want to be clever with this because. Once the opponent knows that this is, has been played, they are going to play around it. They're never going to position themselves so that they are next to multitudes of your fighters. Yeah, keep this in, in your pocket and play yeah. it as a Yeah, play surprise. it after, that, after they have charged in on your, on your zombies. Then you just pop this one and then you just counter-attack them back. Yeah, uh, definitely hold on to this as long as you can to, to get the, the surprise out yeah. of it. I think that's the way to go. Uh, then we have Dynamic Stabilizer. When a friendly conducting minion within two hexes dealt damage, reduce that damage by one to a minimum of one. Yeah, and this card uh, against mm, quite a lot of fighters uh, effectively doubles your zombie's health. Because if every, every fighter that normally deals two damage and is able to one-shot your zombies, will after you have landed this be forced to make two attacks. Yeah, uh, I also think this is very good. There are upgrades that does this to a single fighter, and those are definitely playable. Those are definitely good, many of them. And this is a bit more conditional, but you can also give it to a lot of fighters or minions at the same time. So, And it works also really well together with Dynamic Enhancer. So there is a playstyle here that are quite interesting. So yeah. This is also one of the cards I like. Uh, but it's going to take some time to try this one out because this one also uh, like if if you get this in the later stages of the game and then you have like raised a couple of your zombies and they are uninspired they are left with one wound token being vulnerable then this does nothing yeah they're just gonna die yeah. uh, either way so. and, and and that is like the reason why i rank this below dynamic enhancer i think this one could potentially have like if if there's some playstyle where you can like put pool D and Talos and the whole zombie group together, keep them stacked up, start scoring glory points, and and then keep the zombies from dying too easily. Yeah, uh, I think this is like a B for me. It's not as good as dynamic enhancer, but it, it's still good. Yeah, uh, I have it at a B minus. Yeah. It's an interesting card. If you get it early, then it's going to be good, and I think it might actually be like it might be worth the mulligan for this because it's going to be really, really impactful if you get it early and you can get it into the board early. Yeah, it is. Then we have powered command reaction after an attack action that took a friendly conductive minion out of action, place that fighter in a hex adjacent to the attacker, then give that fighter one race counter, then break this card. This is one of those other catch up cards. Uh, Getting your fighters back means that if they charge in, then you can uh, make use of their uh, attack ability in an upcoming dance activation. So I kind of like this card. Getting your fighters back is part of the game plan for this warband. And... I think this is also one of those cards like, why wouldn't you include But it's, it's not like amazing either. It's just, it's just pretty good. <laughs> yeah, and it, I think it's like one of those like safety nets for this warband. Like, um, as um, you want to keep on activating Dientalos or Markov uh, over the course of the games, there will be times when you lose two fighters or that you uh, don't get to activate uh, Day and Talos because you were perhaps forced to make a charge action because uh, it were crucial to that previous activation. Yeah. And then you don't get to raise your zombies or like perhaps the opponent killed one zombie in the last activation and then they start the next round and then they kill another zombie and you are left one zombie down. Yeah. 
then you might possibly want to make use of this card to make sure that you have a catch-up mechanic. Yeah, I, it's just a B for me. It's, it's a good card. Yeah, I think so as well. B for me as well. And then we have a card that isn't really B for me, but it's quite quite interesting. It's Prison of Grief. Uh, one focus or swirly. Use this after an enemy fighter's activation if that fighter is within three hexes. If cost, stagger that fighter. So it goes kind of nicely into like the mechanic where you want to have your overloaded fighters attack staggered targets to deal additional damage. Yeah, I think this is this is a very interesting card design wise because this reaction happens after every one of your enemy fighters activations if that fighter is close enough, which is quite interesting. Yeah, so that's something that can happen in, in every activation. The effect is not that strong, but the fact the fact that it happens every turn is, is it's, it's decent. If you have this, you might actually score that uh, card that requires you to cast three spells in a turn. Yeah, Because definitely. good positioning and then this is going to make it so that your uh, like continued stream of spell casting will eventually stack up three successfully cast yeah, spells. Yeah, so there are ways you can make that, that card work, that glory card, yeah, that, that's true. Mm, this, is, this is definitely not an A. I definitely don't think it's an A. Um, it's I don't a... think it's a B either. I think no. it's like staggering isn't really a great effect, and that is ultimately what pushes this card down to a C for me. Yeah, it, it probably is a C, uh, but it, it's, it's a, one of the most fun cards that we've seen. I think yeah. this is a very fun card, very interesting, especially like if you're playing with a beginner or someone new to the game, I think this is a very interesting effect to include. Uh, so I really like the card design, but it's probably a C. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm looking forward to more upgrade cards that, yet, that allows you to like yeah. reaction cost spells. Uh, then we have Spark of Life, Illusion. Uh, do not spend the glory points when you play this card, yeah, you know how illusion works. And it gives you plus one move and plus one defense, and it's restricted to minions. Kind of run of the mill card, I think this is probably fine. It's not amazing, but plus one move is okay, it helps you position your fighters better. Plus one defense isn't always gonna be that impactful for these zombies because they have so bad health, but uh, I think it's okay. C yeah. for me. Yeah, it's probably like a C for me. Uh, it's not that important because keeping them alive is, is not... Like if they die, it's not the end of the world. Yeah, yeah it's a it, C. Yeah, I think it's like... If, if the card would only read plus one move, it would be too weak. But plus one move, plus one defense is probably like balanced. You get, you get a card's worth out of this. Yeah, I'd say so. Then we have Unfaltering Guard. When an adjacent enemy fighter makes an attack action, they cannot target a fighter other than this fighter. When this fighter is taken out of action, break this card, and it is restricted to Regulus. I don't really like it, because I want Regulus to, to stay alive. I don't want Regulus to die. If it would be any of the other minions, I think it would be a lot better. And you could stack this with the one, one damage card effect as well, to make it really dirty. Uh, but... Yeah, I'm not sure I want Regulus to die, and he doesn't have that great defensive rolls either, so... Uh, spending one whole glory point for this, and then it breaks, so when you raise him, it's you don't get this one back. Yeah, but I guess... Yeah, this is hard to evaluate, but, but I think it's probably a C. Yeah, I, I think that too often you'll draw this in a later stage of the game, and then you, you, you don't really need it at that time, and if you get it at the perfect stage, the... There are other upgrades that I would prefer above this, so I, I give this a D. Yeah. And then we have Unfeeling Fortitude, uh, which is uh, the <laughs> worst <laughs> version of uh, Great Fortitude. Yeah, not so Great Fortitude. <laughs> not so Great Fortitude. Uh, once again, it, it's not a terrible card, but I don't think you want more wounds on minions, and you should just play Great Fortitude instead. Yeah. Uh, but it, that said, if you could include two copies of Great Fortitude, you probably would in a lot of, of decks. Yeah, like but, uh, uh, the Wraith Creepers, they yeah. have two yeah. great strength, two yeah, great it, fortitude. Yeah, it's good. Uh, but, and they do but, play both. But not in a, in a warband like this, I don't think you care too much about the wounds. Your minions are going to die, that's just a fact. Yeah, and uh, when you bring them back with the race counters, uh, they will like 
be vulnerable so they will only have one wound counters even if even though they will have this upgrade remaining yeah so uh, no it, it, yeah, it just works once so don't yeah. don't try to be cl- uh, clever with it. <laughs> no no yeah i agree so yeah this is like a, a d no it's probably like an e in championship format it's probably like a d in, in uh, rivals yeah I, i i think so as well and um, not 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 absolute e i think d is is fair for this card yeah i mean it's it's not unplayable but why would you play it <laughs> there's better alternatives i yeah. guess yeah yeah but judging it from like one wound is powerful yeah it is i guess it is yeah let's give it a d so starting off with the grand alliance death card we have dead simple it's a surge objective scoring one glory point that reads score this immediately after a friendly fighters attack action that takes a target out of action if the attacker And the target had no upgrades during the declare attack action stuff. Yeah, and, and this card is, is better the earlier in the game you play it. But you're not entirely in control here. You're not in control if your opponent spread up his, his upgrades or not. Or, or all of that stuff. So, And if you have this on, on hand and you have like one or two fighters. Then you might not play an upgrade because you want to score this and yeah you can get in weird i don't like this too much. i think that in certain warbands this is better like in kainan's reaper or in this exiled dead like even with your argument said you are gonna have sufficient amount of fighters that do not have any upgrades and since you are the aggressor the activating player you get to pick and choose to attack the fighter that doesn't have an upgrade and then you pick on one search objective yeah i'm still i'm probably gonna put it in c It's really nice if you face off against a horde warband, but facing off an elite warband with three fighters, you're, you're gonna, yeah, and put it in C. Then we have False Vigor, an illusionary upgrade, plus one dice to this fighter's range one attack actions, and plus one move. And this is one of the, exactly like the card we were previously discussing, uh, plus one move isn't sufficient, but stacking one additional benefit is probably good enough, so I think this is... A fine card. I think I, this is good. You, yeah. you can play, since it's death specific, you can place this on, on like uh, the Wraith Creepers. You can place it on their leader or whatever. Like, yeah. yeah. Or oh, just uh, place it on Markov in this deck. Like, give him plus one move. Give him more attacks to his previous attack. Make, I, I think this is a yeah. B for me. Yeah, this is probably a B. Then we have Death's Dew. So pick one player. For each illusion upgrade their surviving fighters have, that player picks one. Spend one glory point or break that card. If that player cannot spend any glory point, they must break that card. Illusionary upgrades are getting better and better and more and more of them are coming out. So this might be one of those cards that you, you will see quite a lot of in the future if, if there's a lot of illusionary It's upgrades. It's like a safety valve perhaps, but I still read this card as like... Uh, I, I give you my card. I, I have Death's Dew. I play my card, it goes into the discard pile. You take your illusionary upgrade and it goes into the discard pile. We are both down one card. And you might still have gotten use of your illusionary upgrade. This is this is one of those like situational cards. If you were to have like a sideboard in this game, yeah. like have a magic, then this would be a really good sideboard card. Yeah, like, But it's uh, like just as it is, probably not. Yeah, I, I don't think that you will get ahead of this card alone because best case scenario you do manage to like destroy two illusionary upgrades or you get the opponent to spend one glory point so that they can't play another upgrade but in the later stages of the game they might have sufficient amount of upgrades so that they don't really care about you playing this and then you're just down one card i like that this card exists because it it uh, prohibits some things yeah, like, but it, it's not great <laughs> the card art is cool at least i <laughs> yeah. like the card yeah. art, but... and then we have the chaos grand alliance cards and we start with cursed shadows flip each feature token that is not an objective token deal one damage to each fighter on an even numbered objective token revealed in this way then flip each objective token revealed uh, in this way back I think this one is too weird. Or you'll seldom have enough information that you'll know if it's an older even objective token that the opponent is standing on, and then you're just risking to miss out. And yeah, and it's it, only two out of five objectives as well that's gonna yeah. do damage. Um, and uh, it does require the opponent to be standing on that feature token, and 
it also requires you to have this card before they have flipped it. Because yeah. if it's on the objective side, and then you flip it onto the gloom side, because you want, I don't know why you would want to yeah. do that. But, <laughs> but it's, it's nice to finally see that the numbers on the objective tokens <laughs> comes into play for <laughs> yeah. once again. But uh, this is not a good card. This no. is a D for me. Yeah, I, Maybe an E. Even. I think it's an E. I don't think you'll, I'll, I don't think you'll run this. Then we have an upgrade. Killing Frenzy. Giving this fighter's range 1 and range 2 attack actions have Grievous if this fighter and or the target have one or more wound tokens. This is pretty good for, for certain warbands. This is definitely not like an auto include, but I'm thinking about like Red, Dread Pageant for example. That give themselves wound tokens uh, for Slaky Slash and, and for Vasilak. This is great. Yeah, uh, I think that it's like very niche upgrade, but uh, for Dread Pageant specifically, I think you might want to consider yeah, it's, this. It's really good on Dread Pageant, I think. But in general, but it's is it is it really an A because it's it's grievous? Is it like is that alone worth a full card? I think it is on on those cards that you're pretty much in, in that warband that you're pretty much guaranteed to have wound counters or wound tokens on your fighter. I think it's it definitely good enough but but that's like a very niche use yeah. for the majority of the the chaos warbands it's not good enough uh, then we have an objective we have questionable loyalty hybrid score this on an end phase if one or more friendly companions are each three or more hexes away from each other fighter named on their fighter card or there is one or more surviving friendly slanesh fighters and a friendly slanesh leader is out of action I, I can't even like put my mind around this card. Is this like planning for an upcoming warband? Uh, I'm not sure if there's... I can't think of any on, on the top of my head. But this is... It's quite easy to score this. You just have to move your companion away. But but I think it's do you really card. want that? Like you want to be like your chaos warband. I figure that you want to be out fighting. Do you really want to like... Well it, it's just basically make a move action and score one glory. In that yeah. case. But I think it's in good. the end phase. Yeah, in, in the end phase, but uh, I think this is good. It, and, and then you have the second criteria. There is one or more surviving friendly Slanesh fighters and a friend Slanesh leader is out of action. Yeah, I but, basically, but they, like, in, read this, as, this card as a like, teaser for an upcoming <laughs> warband. I don't know, but in, 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 a, in a Slanesh warband, it's trash if you don't have a companion. But in a companion warband, I think it, it's good. Because you also have, a, on, on the art here, you have the Godsworn Hunt. And they also have the wolf. No, the wolf, it's a dog that's featured on the card. It's make a move action and score in that step. And it's good. Yeah. But what happens if it's dead? Is it, is it more than three away? Or is it, no, it's is that, it scoreable no, if the no, companion is it, dead? It is one or more friendly companions are each. So you don't count the distance from the fighters. You count that there is one or more friendly companions. Yeah. But if the companion is dead, no, th how far away is it? <laughs> <laughs> then, then, it's, uh, then it's not, uh, regardless of how far away it is, it doesn't fulfill yeah. the requirements. I mean, it, it, I, it's still a B for me. I think it's good. I think it's really situational. C. I, I, it's too weird for me. I, I can't give it a like, valid evaluation, even though it's exactly what we are trying to do here. <laughs> yeah. Then we have the destruction cards, and we start with the gambit. We have skittering price. Pick one objective token in an empty hex, scatter two from that hex and place the objective token in the end hex. If the end hex is blocked or contains a feature token, or if the chain is interrupted, leave the objective token where it is. If the end hex is lethal, remove the objective token from the battlefield instead. Okay, so this is one of those prize, there's a bunch of these cards where you get to push around objective tokens. And there were a time when that was a valid playstyle, but I don't think that we are in that, like being in Nether Maze and Harrow Deep, I don't see this being really relevant right now. So I think this is probably an E. I, I don't see this like, no, this uh, is... what is the payoff here? Like, yeah, you you uh, get to counter what warband? Yeah, unless I'm missing something, this is just dumb. Uh, yeah. if, if I, it, like pr price cards used to be a thing, but I don't see it happening um, like being relevant right now. Then we have um, uh, another upgrade. We have Heave Ho. This fighter's range one and range two attack actions have knockback one, and they also have reaction. During this fighter's attack action, after the drive back step, 
if the target was driven back two or more hexes, deal one damage to the target. And just to make uh, like certain, like if you knock back and you uh, drive them back in a straight line, uh, then you are gonna drive them back two as long as there is like a distance, sufficient distance for them yeah. to be driven back in. And I think this this is pretty all right because you can put this on like a fighter that has some some fighters roll a lot of dice and deal doesn't deal that much damage. Yeah, like but what's your favorite in that headcrackers map? <laughs> yeah, it's uh, tooth sticker, <laughs> tooth dagger, and is 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 his call, and he rolls like three dice, like four when inspired, and for him it's just like knock back one, deal one extra damage, and it's yeah. Yeah, Why not? A, yeah, like this seems like a destruction card. Like yeah. I would probably include this. It's it's like great strength with extra steps. Yeah, and, and knockback in itself has has its upsides, yeah, especially yeah. when you're playing with uh, with lethal hexes and stuff. Yeah, so. at times you get to make uh, even additional damage. I think this is a good card for certain yeah, warbands. I'm probably gonna give it a, a B, uh, but it it seems like a good card to me. Yeah, it seems like a good card. And then we have no nice things. Gordis and end phase. If there are one or more upgrade cards in one or more opponents' discard piles, okay. have, Sorry, they made, so... have they made a, a mistake on this card? Yeah, and they, they upgrade or, yeah. or is it? Do they shorten it like that? No, they can't. Oh, no, it, it's, it's a spelling error. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, so there is there is one additional thing wrong with this card. Yeah, because you can't have upgrade cards. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but <laughs> I think that that's yeah. You you will have oversight with that, but I mean, either you have have an opponent playing illusionary upgrades and you get them that way, or they discard in the end of their turn, which is less likely, or you kill one of their fighters. With no, no, if you kill them, the upgrade stays on the fighter card; it doesn't go to the. Oh, that's right, that's right. So it all comes down to how prevalent our upgrade, uh, illusionary upgrades, going to be during the course of the season, and so far, I think they are included in a substantial amount of decks. Yeah. This is gonna be less relevant in like Rivals Plus, but um, in like Championship format, I think this is is probably decent. It's not auto include because you you'll seldom get this in the first turn, but um, it there isn't all that much more requirement to it. It's like an interesting card. Good thing to know that they proofread everything. Yeah. <laughs> Moving on, we head into the Grand Alliance order and we take a look at. Light of Truth, choose one fighter, heal one the chosen fighter, or heal two the chosen fighter, if the chosen fighter had one or more illusion upgrades when you played this card. If you play a lot of illusionary upgrades, this is alright, otherwise just play healing potion. Yeah. If you don't uh, play I think just play healing potion. I think that's the like easier. <laughs> yeah, I guess. But but if you play like six or seven illusionary upgrades, this is probably better than healing potion. Yeah, but, but, but most uh, times healing potion are is better. Possibly, yeah. <laughs> I, I'll, I'll give this a like C. Yeah, it's probably. A card. I give it a C. Play healing potion if you don't have a lot of illusionary upgrades. If you do, this is better. But so we have a illusionary upgrade car called Illusory Courage, and this is quite an interesting one. Give this card only to a vulnerable fighter. Do not spend any glory points when you play this card at the end of the action phase or when this fighter is chosen by a gambit or is dealt damage. Break this card, and then this fighter is inspired. Um, no, uh, it's actually this fighter is inspired regardless. Ah, oh, this fighter is inspired. All right, so it do, it's not inspired after it breaks no. because I thought that was really no. dumb because it has one damage and then if you take damage, yeah. yeah. But still, is this good? Oh, I don't think so. I think the requirement of playing it onto a vulnerable fighter makes this card unplayable. You, yeah, how you, often you, are your fights vulnerable? Not yeah, often enough. Yeah, and like, is it gonna matter that you inspire them then? Are you like looking for the scenario where like, is it the turn around that the card art? <laughs> like implies. Uh, I don't think so. I think this is an E. I, I, yeah. don't, don't try this. I, I don't <laughs> think it's worthwhile like, no, figuring I, I don't out like exactly this. how bad this is. Then we head into the objective card. It's called Blessed Fate. It's a hybrid. It rewards two glory points. Score this in the third end phase if your leader is in enemy territory and has no wound counters or one or more friendly priests is in enemy territory. 
So this, first of all, the, the keyword priest, how many, does any fighter have that? Or is you, it... you can get it by upgrade cards. Nowadays. You can get it by upgrade cards. It might or... be that it will it's... see more play in the future. But... Yeah, it, it might be. And, and if you can get it quite easily, then this is a very good card because you just move in your priest into enemy territory and get score two, which is... Yeah, but it's still in the third end phase. So yeah, the that's right, third end phase. Yeah, that's, that's a bit dumb, I guess. And he, your leader is in enemy territory, there's no wound counters in the third end phase. That's a big ask. Yeah. Yeah, I don't like it. Oh, I don't see this being really, really good. No. Uh, D for me. Yeah. I'm we, we'll wait D and too. see if yeah. something happens. Then we have some universal objectives. And we start with change of priorities. And it's a search objective. You score this immediately after your gambit, which shows one or more friendly fighters who each had two or more illusion upgrades. I think this one goes back into math territory. You'll seldom have uh, two illusion upgrades at the same time as you have this card in hand. Uh, unless you are running a bunch of illusion upgrades. Uh, which you shouldn't because uh, the Exile Dead has better cards. Yeah, uh, I, I don't... Uh, other warbands might see this interesting, but I doubt it. No, I, 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 I don't can't see a good use for this, yeah. I don't think. It's... Uh... Yeah, it's, it's a D or an E for sure. Yeah, I think so as well. Uh, then we have cryptic clues. Stewart, score this in the end phase. If there are two or more surviving friendly fighters and each of those fighters is on a feature token in a cover hex or in a lethal hex. This one is a, like the card art implies that you are playing this in the Exile Dead. I don't think you should. I think you should play this in a warband that has fewer fighters. Uh, an elite warband or something and then you just like take the time off at the end of a turn make sure that you're standing cover hexes and then you score two uh, glory points yeah i think this card is is really good yeah this for, two, is... for two glory i think you include this i think that uh, like the baseline is um, is quite good especially like together with other like play this together with dominant position for example yeah. it's super good yeah why not I, yeah. I think this is but, but you need you need to have every uh, every surviving friendly fighters need to be on a token so if you yeah, have too then... many fighters you are gonna run into the problem of not getting every one of them onto a token but yeah, if you only that, have that is three true. fighters yeah then this one is gonna be yeah in, in exile dead it's just dumb but but in in, in elite warband like give, not that Morgan crushes the really objective holders, but but you get the point. Like yeah. you, you can you can like take time off. Like you mm. can be the aggressive warband that don't care about objectives, and you just step onto a cover hex or yeah. even a lethal hex. I mean, I, I would t ding one of my fighters one damage if I get two glory points. Yeah, yeah, for sure. This is just good. Uh, it's a B, maybe yeah. an A. I think B, B, because it does require a certain deal of work and not every warband is going to be able to score this. Uh, then we have Ever Downwards, Surge and Hybrid. Score this immediately after a power step if you dwelled three or more times or you dwelled one or more times and one of the feature tokens you dwelled was in a hex in enemy territory and occupied by your leader. I think this card is good. Uh, not because you want to delve three times or more. <laughs> I think that's just yeah. weird. But because of the or requirement. Like yeah. Play an aggressive warband, have a leader that can go into enemy territory, and then just get onto a feature token, delve it with your leader, and then score one glory with yeah. the surge. We played Rippa Snarlfangs here the other day. You can just rush in with the Rippa, dwell the objective. Yeah. Just Take a hit, in. they all inspire. Yeah. Boom. Yeah, I think, the, I think this is good stuff. B, B card for me. Not every warband is going to be interested in this, but those that are, are going to like yeah, it. Yeah, it, it's probably a B card. Uh, it comes with some risk. You need to put your leader out there, but yeah, it's yeah. good. But, but it, it also has the catch-up mechanic. You can play defensively and just yeah. have three feature tokens in your territory, dab them, one. This one is each. one of those, uh, like, your leader is often one of the, the later fighters alive, and in the end you just move all over to your... Yeah. Enemy territory. Yeah, but we'll see if the assassin meta is <laughs> yeah. gonna change that. Yeah, I might uh, put that on its head. Then we have Fate Averted. Dual score this in the third end phase if one or more friendly fights are vulnerable and one or more of those fights are in enemy territory. This is kind of hard to evaluate because it might be like that the exile dead is gonna like this card. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I guess. 
I guess so. Like in the Exile Dead, this is good, but in most warbands, this is absolute trash. Yeah, but, uh, exactly. Like this is so so terrible in every other warband. Yeah, but in the Exile Dead, this might work. Yeah. And so for the two... Pulsar Guard, perhaps as well. I don't yeah. know. Yeah, probably. Like uh, like the race mechanic. I was gonna give this an E, but you said the, the Exile Dead, and I, there yeah, is like... some merit. There is some merit. It could be. It could be like a C or even like a B for those warbands. That is the yeah because yeah. Uh, two glory and it, this, yeah. it's still like a really weird card and a lot of people are gonna be caught off guard by this yeah. because uh, both the players running it and <laughs> the players playing <laughs> against it because it's gonna be it's gonna come um, unsuspectingly and then it's gonna be a two glory points. Yeah, it, it has its merits. Um, yeah. E, f e for most warbands, but it has potential to be like B and C for, for certain warbands. Yeah. Build our own card. Yeah. Uh, let's look at Inevitable End. It's a surge dual objective that reads Score this immediately after a friendly fighter's attack action that takes the target out of action if the attack roll contains only successes, including critical successes, and the damage characteristics was equal to or greater than the target's wound characteristics. So a really, really worthy attempt at fixing like um, unequal contest. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Uh, but it, this is, uh, at, at first glance, th this looks problematic because you only need to roll successes. But, and you need to take the fighter out of action as well. But on a warband like Morlock's Mob, Kynan's Reapers, like maybe you could make this work, but it, it's it's a lot of conditions since you need to roll only successes and take it out of action. So that, that puts it down quite a lot for me. Yeah, but then it is a surge objective and whilst we sometimes argue that dual objectives are uh, like innately worse than uh, like cards that have a clearer path to scoring them, mm. I think that this card, like re the, the, the first requirement that you need to take the target out of action and the damage characteristic is equal to or greater than the target's wound characteristics, they're gonna overlap quite often. Yeah, they are. Yeah. Uh, so, so, so it basically comes down to kill something where you only have enough success. successes and you are a heavy damage dealer. Yeah, I, I guess so. Secrets uncovered. Uh, hybrid scored in an phase if there are no cover hex in enemy territories or there's a friendly fighter in each cover hex in enemy territory. And... Uh, yeah, what should we say about this? I think that we discussed this briefly if they ever like make the mistake of releasing a future set where you don't have like the gloom feature tokens and uh, this card is still in rot rotation it's going to be really problematic because yeah, this then this is just bananas this yeah. is free glory then, <laughs> yes free glory in an end step but, but right uh, now right now i think it's um, it's it's if you play this in a random deck and the opponent isn't aware of that it's going to come down to which board did they randomly choose and if there are no cover hexes, or if there's only a few, then you can possibly just run in, delve a feature token, or just stand on a cover hex, and then you score it quite easily. But against someone who knows that you have this card, they're just gonna like place as many feature tokens as they can in their own territory, or gonna pick a board which has one of those two additional cover hexes. Yeah, in, in a best of three, it's it's super trash. But but I think it's super trash anyway. I don't like it. This uh, is a D for me. Yeah, it's it's like, what what's the upside? You you got your opponent once. Uh, there there's so many better cards to choose. Yeah. Don't. I, I think this players. is a D. Yeah. Then we have some universal power cards. We have. Abasot's Eruption. Gambit spell, roll one swirly. If cast, deal one damage to each fighter on a feature token that is not in enemy territory. And this being a spell, uh, like puts a dampener on it somewhat, but the effect, deal one damage to each fighter on a feature token that is not in enemy territory. This is like the, the defensive card that uh, the Exile Dead might want to play at times. Like you get a bunch of feature tokens on your territory, you don't like stand on them and then you bait the opponent onto getting onto them for the cover effect and then you follow up with this deal one damage to two fighters. Yeah, placing a lot of, of feature tokens in your territory and then playing a defensive playstyle, uh, this, this definitely has merit. But yeah, I think, I think uh, it's a bit too situa situational and it is a spell as well, so 
I don't like it. I probably won't put this in my deck. No. But it is incredibly interesting though. I, yeah, I do like uh, it. Cool, cool, like bright card art. So, uh, D for me. Dark Epiphany. Draw one power card for each friendly fighter in a cover hex. Then discard that many power cards. And you can really shine through your library with this card. Yeah, I like these kinds of cards. These cards are, are good in magic and I think they will be good in Underworlds as well. Yeah, Just drawing the, through your deck and, and then discarding, I, I think that's I think it's good. Yeah, but but consider this scenario. You have uh, three fighters on cover hexes like let's let's like say yeah. you have a lot of fighters. Three 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 of them. Then you draw three and then you discard three. And you also lose out on this card. So you are down one card in the exchange. You have filtered out four cards in exchange for three from your deck. Yeah, I guess it depends on, on how how dependent your warband is on a certain card. Yeah. I guess guess that's the thing. Because if you look at this like Duel of Wits, you just draw two cards when you when your opponent yeah. plays it. Then, then you have card advantage. You get you are up one card. Yeah, and, and in this I think you probably a lot of the times you're probably just gonna have two fighters from cover hexes when you play this. Three is like that's a lot. Yeah. Then you really have to make some setup. So so then it's worse than Duel of Wits, but Duel of Wits are really good. Yeah. Uh, but I think that you want Duel of Wits instead of this. Yeah, like, you do want Duel like, of Wits instead. But, uh, like, if... Let's say that there is, like... Uh, there is an upcoming map mechanic that I don't like. Mm. But if you run Dark Epiphany, you are gonna be able to, like, churn out through your deck quicker. Yeah, but if, if you we get to the, the point where you can look for, like, specific cards, you need, like, puzzle pieces for, for your Warband to really work amazingly. This paired with Duel of Wits give you the ability to draw through your deck very quickly and assemble those pieces. But just right now, I don't know. It's just yeah, the yeah. worst version of Duel of Wits, yeah, it but might, it has potential. Yeah, it might be fun to like have see a playstyle where you have a deck that isn't filled of like four or five really good cards, and then you have some upgrades. Like let's say that you have a playstyle where you want to rush out like a combo piece, like yeah. four very specific cards. You get them into play, and then you win via that strategy. Yeah, because a lot of times we get like, oh, but how likely is it to have this on hand? Mm. Well, play this and you'll wits, and it's way more likely. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it's, uh, yeah. This, I, this is a very interesting card, but it's super situation. Yeah, I think if you just put this in your card in the, with the intention of drawing cards, you're going to have a like negative experience in the long run. I think then it's just a D. Yeah. But if you have like... If you're looking for really specific cards and you have a reasoning behind it, I think it might be a B. Like build around, make make yeah. sure you have a reason before you put this yeah. in your deck. Someone is gonna do something great with this card. I feel this is one of those cards you can do something great. With. Yeah, I, I hope so. Then we have Iara's Summons. It's a gamut spell looking for lightning. If cast, choose one fighter within three hexes of the caster. Push the chosen fighter one hex towards the caster. And we've seen this card before. I don't remember exactly. Distract? Hypnotic hypnotic case, I think. Yeah, it's called. that's called hypnotic case. Is it the same thing? But yeah, like this is just like comparing it to distract. It's like a multitude of times yeah, but worse. Where's the, what is the difference between the, the other one, hypnotic case? Um, it, you can push it wherever you like, right? Yeah, uh, here are summons. Here you can choose one fighter, both friendly and enemy fighters, with. Uh, uh, Hypnotic. hypnotic haze yeah. you are only allowed to push or choose enemy fighters yeah but, so with but this that, one you can make a defensive play as well yeah but but that card hypnotic haze is not good enough to see play this is not good enough to see play so this is probably just a c for me yeah. i think it's, maybe d i think it's d i think this is unplayable almost yeah. but uh, it's not you, good enough uh, not, not good enough uh, then we have Leech Strength. Choose one friendly fighter and one enemy fighter adjacent to that fighter. In the next activation, the chosen fighter's range 1 attack actions have a damage characteristic equal to the highest damage characteristic of the chosen fighter's attack actions. So, the, like as we see, see on the picture here, you have Black Powder getting drained and then you just hammer at him with his own strength and yeah, potentially deal enough damage to take him out of action. Um, I think this card is probably like quite all right at times and really, really bad at other times. So um, that like 
weird uh, like unreliableness makes it a card that I'm not really interested in finding out more about. Um, no, it 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 has it, its uh, upsides. Like uh, uh, for, for like Exile Dead, you can use this quite nicely to against Molog or, or anyone else. But a lot of the times you're just gonna face like a regular warband, and maybe their highest attack action has a damage of three if you're lucky. And, and like how much do you actually gain yeah, at like that point? At, yeah, like at mm. times it might not even be that you want your one attack fighter to be the one that you make use of because he, he might be dead or you might be in a situation where you have to not make an attack with Regulus because he is yeah. the only one yet in position and then you get plus one strength yeah. if you are even able to. Like in, in certain certain situations this is gonna be amazing to play <laughs> but, it's gonna but be think... really hilarious as well because <laughs> yeah. when you have your fully upgraded kainan on one side and then you have uh, <laughs> yeah <laughs> like uh, what's his name um, have... day talos uh, hitting with his staff dealing five damage <laughs> yeah some something like that uh, like but pro... i don't know um it's, it's a weird card um, let's give him an optimistic c plus yeah, probably something like that. C C plus. Um. It's gonna be fun. Like this, if, yeah, it's if a you very want, fun card. Yeah, if you want to have some variety and like want to one up your opponent, play this card. Yeah. Then we have Phantom Theft reaction. Play this after an enemy fighter is given an illusionary upgrade. That fighter's player must pick one. Discard one glory point or break that card. So we have a counter spell. Um, so like my card for your card. And you can only play this when your opponent ha is running illusion upgrades, which makes this card hor horribly terrible. Uh, you also give your opponent uh, the option to spending glory point if they really care about their illusion card. So yeah. I think this just. But this kind of design has potential. Like if, if it was like reaction, pay one glory point, your opponent must pay one extra glory point or discard that they just played upgrade or was it like there's potential with these kinds of cards but i don't think that this one is good enough no, i think that even if you like yeah if if if, if you if you could target like real upgrades uh possibly you would have to increase the cost yeah then then it might be like interesting to like be able to counter that uh, great fortitude that uh, puts your target out of range or counter that great strength that is about to kill your guy uh, then, then it would be nice but this this is yeah too little uh, it, it's not worth it in best case scenario you, you trade one card for one card and it, it's just an illusion upgrade that you get so yeah and, and Often at times you're not going to be able to play this. This is so often going to be a dead card in your hand. Yeah, this is uh, this is like a D for me. I, I think I, I have it on E. I, I wouldn't. I would never include this in my decks. Pierce the darkness. In the next activation, attack actions that target a fighter in a cover hex or an edge hex have cleave. I think this is a bit too situational. I I don't really like it. Um... Yeah, I guess that's all I have to say. I think it's, it's a D. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Cleave isn't all that great anymore. It's like so many fighters already have that keyword and there are plenty of targets that have evade against which, the, against which this does nothing. So I, I, I say D as well. Uh, then we have Vault's Mysterium, which is a waypoint card. Plus one wizard level to each wizard. A wizard suffers backlash if their casting roll contains one or more crits. And when a wizard is dealt damage by backlash, backlash deals one additional damage to that wizard. The effect persists until another waypoint is played. This is one of those cool cards, uh, which probably is not that cool to play. I think this card is amazing. This is the <laughs> best card from the, the entire set. Okay, fi I, finally we disagree on yeah, something. I, I think that, that this card, playing it with like... Um, uh, what are they called? The the yeah, uh, the, wizard warband. Uh, they are called uh, curse breakers. Yeah, curse breakers. This is amazing, and I think the waypoint mechanic is fantastic. I think I'm it's gonna, really really good. I'm, I'm looking forward to you killing your guys with this with this <laughs> card because, <laughs> <laughs> like, if if you add on wizard levels to their fighters, they yeah. roll three dice and then it's 
Yeah. Yeah. Every, but every I, other spell you're gonna deal damage and two damage. Yeah, I guess, I guess so. But but I still think it, it's it's so fun because yeah. uh, it, it makes it so that all these these spells that requires two lightning are all of a sudden quite easy to cast. Uh, and the, you can do so many interesting things with this. I'm probably gonna kill myself, yeah. and, it, and it's gonna be a spectacular end. But I like this. Yeah, I, I'm I'm glad that we see like interesting cards that really push uh, the game outside where it's previously been, trying to introduce new mechanics into the game. So for that reason, I like it. Um, that said, I don't think that this card is very good. I think that you're gonna kill yourself and your wizards. Which are crucial to your four bands quite often. I think this is S tier. <laughs> no, S tier. <laughs> okay, let, let's no. put it in the special tier. <laughs> yeah. Ralph Wiggum special tier. No, no, but it it probably it probably isn't that good. I, I mean that, that or it's it could be. It has so much potential, but you don't you can't roll any crits. I'm, I'm gonna put it in the S tier special it, tier yeah. for me. I'm I'm gonna. Give it a B just because I'm excited. Okay. <laughs> Let, let's take a look at Blazing Icon. You cannot give this card to a beast. This fighter is a priest. <laughs> that rhymes. That's funny. You cannot give this card to a beast. This fighter is a priest. <laughs> and then when this fighter is the target of an attack action, enemy fighters cannot provide support. So they should just have replaced support with something that rhymes with action. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Anyway, but uh, yeah, it, it's an upgrade. Uh, if you would care about being a priest uh, and like priest doing actually something worthwhile, then possibly. Yeah, on, but on its right own, now, I don't see any, yeah. any reason. But but it, it, yeah, like removing support isn't isn't sufficient. Yeah, I, I feel like this is foreshadowing for for something. Uh, but yeah. on its own, it's it's just not good enough. Illusory strength. Uh, this fighter's range one attack action has grievous. Yeah, like being an illusion, and um, th there are no additional costs to playing this card. I basically see this as a ploy card where you push put this card on one of your fighters at the end of your opponent's activation, just before you are about to make the attack. Your attack have grievous, and then you have the added upside of this card staying the full round out. Yeah, I think this is probably all right. Uh, yeah, I think this, I think this, this is right. like fine fine card. I I probably like like that it takes up one of the upgrade slots because usually in my mind deploy cards are like on average stronger, but if I can play a free upgrade slot that gives grievous kind of like a ploy card. Yeah, I'm, this works kind of like for like an extra ploy card. Yeah. And and you like balances out the cards that are which can make you an, um, like have an impactful early start of the game. And then we have an interesting one. We have Improbable Maze. And it's an attack action with a range 1, rolling 1 dice, looking for hammers with 2 damage and knockback 1. But, plus 2 dice to this attack action if the fighter is a minion. Yeah, and like, there isn't all that many warbands that will want to pl put this on the, their vulnerable fighters because they are just gonna be the target of the next attack action but that said like this is really a good attack action like uh, three uh, smash dealing two damage with knockback one really improving a good deal of uh, minions that have problematic attacks on their own i think this might be like a c card um, i think this one is like a sufficiently statted card that you want to consider it in a minion warband. Like uh, yeah, it Black Powder's Buccaneers or like uh, the Cunning Crew. Yeah, there, there's nothing wrong with it. It's not a great card or anything. Uh, these kind of cards become a lot stronger when you play with like lethal hexes and stuff, like we said before. But it's, uh, yeah, it's not bad. I probably wouldn't in include it in like a competitive deck, but it, it's not trashed here for sure. Like it's, yeah, yeah. C is all right. And then we have a fun card coming up. We have Living Missile. When this fighter makes a ranged 1 attack action as part of a charge action, that attack action has plus 1 damage, Grievous, and knockback 1. Um, and after this fighter makes that charge action, deal 1 damage to this fighter. And it's restricted to flying. 
Yeah, I think I just think this is good. But I think Shriek that is on the on the card here doesn't he already have Grievous? Yeah, but I think this is worth it. Why not? Uh, I mean, it's even if if you fail the the attack, I can you still take one damage, which is a bit problematic. But I th I still think this is a really good card. Why yeah, not? but the, the downside is that most warbands don't have uh, like many flying uh, fighters on like black powders, buccaneers. Uh, Shriek is often killed like early and uh, Sanders Truth Seekers. Uh, it's it's not that unlikely that you have uh, have them target down the, the bird as well. Yeah, it, it, it's it's an interesting card. I don't know if, if it's great. I, I, I have it in the C range just because I would like to have my Warband have at least two viable targets if I put this kind of card in it. I think this is good. I think I would include this in, in at least like as I read it right now, I'd probably include this in, in any deck that has a flying fighter. I think it's it's that good. I, I think like that for me this is probably like a B plus. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We'll 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 have to play it out and see how it how it works. Yeah. Then we have Penumbral Pendulum. This fighter has line of sight to each fighter in a cover hex and or edge hex. This does not change this fighter's distance from those fighters or the range of this fighter's attack actions. Yeah, I don't, I don't see why you would want this. Like, wh wh why would you care about edge hexes? You can basically like use very niche amount of boards to attack through a blocked hex at times or through a cover hex onto a fighter that is within range but yeah, yeah. I don't why? really see the point no yeah, it just seems uh, weird to me yeah it's really really weird I, I, I would so much have liked to hear like a developer's blog where they discussed what which problem does this, does this card solve yeah what's the intended this seems like some filler filler <laughs> stuff right here <laughs> yeah I, I, I think this is like absolute garbage yeah I, I don't see any fighter being propelled. No, this, this seems like E tier to me. You're gonna spend a glory for this now. No, I don't think so as well. Let, let's just move on. It's it's a weird card, it doesn't... Shadow Coil. It's a bound spell, which you cannot give to a corn fighter specifically. Then you get a spell action looking for Swirlis. If cast, pick one enemy fighter within three hexes of the caster. Deal one damage to the enemy fighter. Then roll, uh, here's another typo, the roll one attack die. Mm. On a roll of hammer, give that fighter one move token. This fighter is a level one wizard while attempting to cast this spell and cannot attempt to cast any other spells. After this fighter makes this attack action, break this card. This is so many things that need to happen. You need to pay for this, put this on a fighter, and then you need to make this as an yeah. action. And, and you only have 50% chance of making this action. Yeah, and to get to deal one damage, and only then do you have another uh, two thirds, two sixths of a chance to give that move token. Yeah, the, the only way this is worth trying is if you can kill the fighter, basically. Yeah, but, but them... yeah, but it, it requires a spell action, so like yeah, yeah. So so it, it's, it's still. It, trash it's, yeah. <laughs> it's still trash it's, uh, it's trash in every metric yeah this is probably like f yeah <laughs> yeah let's because go this fighter is a level one with about time to cast a spell so even if you give this to a wizard with higher wizard level it's gonna be level one with yeah. spell, which makes it dumb yeah it's dumb yeah don't play this card yeah it, it card art looks cool somehow yeah but uh, card is yeah. trash then we have Vortex Staff. In this fighter's casting rolls, rolls of Lightning are considered to be rolls of Swirlis and vice versa. If this fighter's casting roll contains two or more crits, then this spell fails. This fighter suffers backlash as normal. So a slight upgrade card for Wizards. Um, I don't think that like you, you get one additional successful um, uh, roll aside on the, on the die. Uh, by making this if you upgrade from uh, focus to channel but is it gonna be worth a whole upgrade slot i don't think so but the problem is you can't choose yeah. so you're well, you can choose like you you have control over which cards you put in the deck yeah but then you're gonna put cards in your deck that has a 
lesser chance of yeah. being cast when you don't have this upgrade on. Yeah, and that, then that, you're that piling on the conditions <laughs> and it becomes really weird. I don't like this. No, uh, <laughs> no when you put it like that. And, and then you have the additional like downside of uh, like if you roll double crits, it only happens 1 in 36. Yeah. Then, then you fail somehow. And then you still suffer backlash. No, yeah. this is E or F for me. It's yeah, not yeah. Playable. It's 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 a bad card, simply yeah. put. And that's all for the universal cards. That is all of the cards from from the set. We've gone yeah. through all of yeah, them. Yeah, finally. finally. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're, like... we're we're always so good at keeping it brief, uh, but uh, we appreciate that uh, <laughs> if you tune in for our card review, you're in for the long run, and you're gonna get the whole package. Yeah, for sure. We started at half past seven, and it's now uh, yeah, twenty two forty two. Yeah, three hours and ten minutes. Uh, yeah. So we we can talk a lot, and we always try to keep it brief, but it's never brief. But yeah, I guess if, if you're watching, I guess you enjoy that. Yeah, should we give our final take on, on the uh, Exile Dead? What are we looking forward to? Like, I, before, we, before we leave out. Well, yeah. I, I am a lot more excited than I was when they were first revealed. Like, I thought they were gonna... They looked a little bit boring, I thought. But, but when I've seen the cards and the fighter cards and... Man, there's so much potential. I think you can do a lot of things and it's it's gonna there's so many different play styles and, and things you can try so there's there's gonna be a lot of testing and yeah I'm excited. Yeah I, I, I want to be as well. I think that like the defensive play style that you briefly see here where you keep every conductive fighter and daintalos together, move them around, possibly even like move on to the opponent's side. It seems yeah. kind of fun and uh, like there is plenty of opportunity to like have a zombie horde rush over and just yeah. make massive attacks. Yeah, or maybe just turtle in a corner. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, lock your, your fighters in in a corner. You have some range 2 attack actions. Just do around them. When the people come near you, you hit with all your zombies. And you just build a castle yeah, yeah. in the back. Why not? <laughs> yeah, like defensive play style. You just dirtily <laughs> move them around. Yeah. yeah, build a castle in the back. <laughs> and no one can come close. Why, why not? I mean, yeah. you can do some fun stuff, I think. I'm going to try that out. Yeah. The castle yeah. mechanic. I'm going to play sort of by skits and try to bowl you down. <laughs> yeah, that. that would be fun. But you need to get to the other side. And he has a movement of like two. Yeah. And then you need to <laughs> scatter all the way. So I yeah, think that's cool. unlikely. Uh, uh, I, I'm like... My my review of this warband has improved from having discussed them with you. I'm I think this is a fun warband and they look cool. I think that they have a unique playstyle. I'm only like minorly fearful that they are gonna be losing out in in the games because it's gonna be so so easy for an opponent to just come in and kill a bunch of their fighters each and every turn, like. Kynan's Reapers is gonna be... I don't know how they're gonna deal with that siding attack. I th I think this warband is, is strong. They might have a problem with the siding attacks, but I mean a warband like Sarva's Gids have even more problems with the siding attack. These guys are gonna fare better because they can come back. I yeah, guess. but then, then you're like, mm. like, imagine like bringing back fighters every turn and your opponent just <laughs> picking them off. Yeah, you can farm I, I, I them. I could easily this, see like, this, this warband form. lose... I think you're gonna like on average you're gonna lose to like six you're gonna lose out on six to eight fighters each game. Maybe against no. the fighting of uh, yeah maybe against like Kainan uh, maybe that's true. And that, but that's I, like a, a huge bunch. Yeah. Like, like you basically incentivize the opponent to like uh, attack each turn. Yeah. But but against certain warbands that are objective holding playstyles, I think these guys can overwhelm them. Yeah, but, but let's look like which car, which warbands are strong right now. Kainan Reapers, they move together. Cunning Crew move together. These guys move together. I mean, they have potential. I think this can, can be strong. Yeah. I think this can be a very strong warband. If you can keep your leader alive in a reliable yeah. way. And uh, we, we didn't mention it once in this whole video. Like the moving pl together playstyle, getting supporting attacks, supporting defensive roles in. They do stack up, you do get in a better position if you like manage to use that wisely. Yeah, and, and it, the Warband, the Tastas are doing well right now. Yeah. Uh, so, definitely has, has, has potential. Um, but, but I guess yeah. that, that is the end. That of, is finally the end. <laughs> yeah, it's finally the end. We started talking about the end for five minutes ago, but now it's the end. 
Uh, and if you did like this video, please please like and subscribe, of course. And we're gonna be playing this this warband on the channel very shortly, so look forward to that. Yeah. With that, see you all in yeah. the next video. Bye.